Something I noticed in fitness is there's a ton of overlap between people who are interested in video games, anime, and the gym. I mean, pretty much half of my gym friends are full-time closet weebs. So let me know if you can relate to this. As one of those people who are super interested in anime and fitness, there's not a ton of overlap on the influencer side of things. Like sure, there's the how to work out to look like Baki videos. But as someone who's chronically on YouTube, those kinds of videos just never really hit the spot for me. I guess I've really just been wanting to see content that I can relate to where someone combines these passions on a more personal level, so I decided I'm just going to do it myself. With that in mind, I'm going to dive into the profound impact that solo leveling had on my fitness journey and just overall self-development. Now, I've been training for a while, and this video is going to be about how solo leveling was one of the biggest catalysts for initially getting me into the gym. So we're going to have to go back three years to the summer of 2021. Now, it was a hot-ass day, absolutely miserable, and I was outside on these black cushions that were absorbing absolutely all of the summer heat in my family's ATV. Now, I was parked about 15 or 20 feet away from the side of the house. Shirt soaked, my face was dripping, I was there because my dad was pressure washing the side of the house and I was supposed to be helping him, but instead of helping him pressure wash, I was on my phone reading solo leveling. Now, at this time, I was a vastly different person than I am now and I had a completely different mindset, outlook on life, and just overall moral values and work ethic. To put it simply, I was a little sh I had been out of shape and pretty overweight for about five years and it was at this time that I was in my worst conditioning I've ever been in. Now from the start of middle school to where we are now in the story, the summer after my sophomore year of high school, during these five years I had always wanted to improve my body and I had tried to diet honestly countless times using slightly different strategies each time, you know, keto, low carb but not quite keto, tracking my calories, and I'd never seemed to quite stick it through long enough to actually achieve the goals and get to where I wanted to be. I was really the embodiment of the kind of kid who would sit on the bleachers while everyone else played soccer in gym class. I had absolutely zero physical conditioning and what little physical conditioning I did have stemmed from my dad pretty much having to force me to work outside and do yard work, which as a side note, thank you dad, having to do that developed me a ton. And I also got a double XP boost on my forearms. So I'd never really done any kind of physical training plan up to this point. Pretty much never stepped foot into a gym. And when it came to improving my body, I had entirely relied on diet. I didn't know what body fat percentage was. I didn't see the point of resistance training at all. And just overall didn't fully grasp the concept of calories in, calories out. Thinking back to it, I honestly think the way I was treated in school and just the overall kind of social group I was placed into almost framed my mindset to completely wanting to avoid fitness. And up until this point in my life, all the guys who were in pretty good shape at my age were complete assholes to me. I wanted nothing to do with them. So this kind of combination of factors almost subconsciously led me to avoiding the gym and training in general. My identity at this point was literally the weird class clown who made jokes, pretended like being fat didn't bother me, and would use video games and anime to escape from that. Back to our scene where I'm sitting in the ATV in the summer heat, slacking off on my phone, reading solo leveling, while my rapidly physically deteriorating retired infantry marine dad does all the work outside. And I get to the panel specifically where Sung Jin Woo is doing sit-ups on the floor in the hospital. And it was as I read through this and the following chapters that I was like, wait a minute, holy sh**. I want to look like that. And what is he doing that got him to look like that and improve his physique in that way? Well, he's working out, doing sit-ups, push-ups, squats, running. And I thought to myself, huh, maybe I should do that on top of dieting. And specifically this idea of a quest, something really familiar to me as a video game addict, just for some reason got it all to click. So from a perspective of being able to really relate to Sung Jin Woo as almost the background character who everyone pokes fun at, combined with being served the idea of fitness being a means of leveling up, like some kind of real life skill that you can grind in the form of a daily quest, got me to take action that night. Quite frankly, I was super lazy and I just didn't have the motivation or effort to want to work out at all. But Seeing this character that I could relate to go from being that figure that everyone pokes fun at to this badass, super attractive, absolute force to be reckoned with through grinding as if real life, mundane, monotonous tasks are a video game. Now, I've always tended to go through anime and manga manhwa series quite slowly, so it took me the course of six months to a year to actually finish solo leveling. And that actually led to something really interesting happening, where as I grew and as I developed myself as a person, started getting into fitness and improving my body, really putting in that extra effort just because I wanted to be like a cool anime character, I found myself growing and leveling up in real life alongside Sung Jin Woo as the protagonist. I'd stayed consistent with a calisthenics routine pretty much a 
exactly like Sung Jin Woo's. And with that consistency came interest. In my mind, I was like, well, calisthenics surely works, but I want to find out the best way I can go about improving my body, which led to me researching and gathering knowledge and coming to the conclusion that I should probably get in the gym. There's a bunch of limitations with calisthenics, of course, which you can get around if you're really into calisthenics, but I wasn't particularly interested in calisthenics. I wanted the result. I wanted to be a cool, badass anime character. Honestly, I still do. So once school picked up in fall, I ended up getting into the gym. On a weekly basis, I was consistent in the gym, and over the course of weeks and months, with the help of some friends in the gym and researching online, I eventually developed a pretty solid split. And once that happened, and I really started to grasp the idea of progressive overload, it was almost like a new dimension got added to my life. Progressive overload is just the real life equivalent of leveling up and gathering experience. I started applying it to not only the gym, but other areas outside of the gym. I wanted to level up my discipline, so I started doing things like getting up early, actually looking forward to and enjoying doing things like yard work because I saw them as ways to gather free experience. Quite frankly, these ideas still shape my mindset on things today. For example, if I'm faced with the decision between going to the gym or going to a party, I'm going to take the gym any day because why on earth would I XP waste? I'm not a filthy casual. Like it's a little goofy and it makes me smile just talking about it. But to some level, I really do take this mindset seriously. To me, it's just a fun way to go about life. I love video games. I love anime. So why not combine the aspects that I love into my day-to-day -day life in a healthy and positive way? And on top of having fun with it and using this new mindset to enjoy things that I I once absolutely hated and I didn't see the point in, it really got me the results. And it might not be to the extent I have where I literally view bad habits as like XP wasting and just doing habits where I want to optimize how fast I can level up in real life. Like it sounds a little bit ridiculous to some extent, but I have a feeling that a lot of people who are into fitness and into the gym also have somewhat of a similar mindset. Back to the beginning of the video where I recognize that there's a lot of overlap between anime, video games, and fitness. Even subconsciously, I think a ton of guys really use the gym to almost replace anime and video games in their life, or at the very least, just pulled the principles that they picked up playing video games in their childhood, consuming anime as a kid, and somewhat subconsciously applied that to real life. Now, I recognize that I'm obviously still continuously improving, and I have a lot of room to grow, but through my efforts and the vast amount of progress I've made, I've built up the confidence to say that I'm somewhat of a real-life success story of this kind of conversion from video games and anime negatively affecting my life to it having an amazing positive impact. So let's zoom out to the bigger picture a little bit here. I've consumed a lot of self-improvement content over the years, and I've even worked for the biggest self-improvement YouTuber. I wonder who that could possibly be. Now, I could honestly make a whole separate video on just this, so I'm not going to dive too deep into it, but I've always felt a bit discontent and almost have a bad taste in my mouth with how extreme and very repetitive a lot of these ideas getting thrown around in the self-improvement space actually are. If you consume fitness or self-improvement content to any extent, I'm sure the YouTube algorithm has recommended to you self-improvement content. And what I see is a lot of these YouTubers, especially the smaller ones, just take the things that their favorite self-improvement YouTuber says and just regurgitate it with seemingly very little self-awareness and just an overall complete lack of unique ideas. It feels like the idea of just wanting to make yourself better has been converted into this self-improvement industry, which is essentially an echo chamber of people saying video games are terrible, anime is bad, if you watch anime, you're a weirdo, don't have any hobbies, work all day, and go to the gym stay disciplined. With these ideas in mind, it might seem like going cold turkey on all of these seemingly negative hobbies and passions you've had throughout your life might be the best idea. I think if you have a hobby, which you've developed for years of something like anime, you completely overindulged in it and it was a negative impact on your life. You have this genuine passion that you've just taken too far. Keep in mind specifically a hobby that you've cultivated for years and you genuinely deep down love. You just go cold turkey on it and quit it forever because some YouTuber said it's a waste of time and it's bad which has some truth to it. At the point I was at, it was a huge waste of time and I was overdoing it. But what I'm saying here is I think true discipline isn't going cold turkey. That's somewhat of an easy way out. I think it's also just that extreme ideas are easy to sell to people who are in a low place in their life. I think true discipline is being able to still enjoy the hobbies that you have or had in moderation so it doesn't have a negative impact on your life. And on top of that, reframe your mindset, take the principles from that hobby that you love and convert it into something that's going to have a positive impact. If you can do that, I think you're on the right track. And I'm also kind of tired of this weird, like obsessive looks maxing fucking chewing this ball to make your jawline sharper stuff. It's just kind of like 
touch grass and go meet people, bro. I don't know. It's just this huge load of bullshit that has kind of given me a bit of a distaste for the self-improvement community, even though I do think that the overall impact has been very positive. Let me know how you're leveling up in real life. Do you have the same mental illness as me, where I view life as a video game that I'm the main character in, or I guess you're the main character in? Q&A. No, I'm not a narcissist. Just because I have the outlook that I'm the protagonist of my own story doesn't mean I think I'm better than other people. Unless you're a filthy casual, and I'm a higher level than you. In that case, fuck you, bigger number, better person. You're just a low level f***ing scrub ass mutt, god noob. Get out of my lobby, kid. Sign up for my coaching, first link in the description. Bye.